morning and welcome to Morning Thought from the Avon Valley Churches. My name is Mary Melbourne and I'm one of the church wardens at Bremer, which is one of the seven churches surrounding Fordingbridge in the northwest corner of the beautiful and ancient New Forest. Although Christmas now seems far behind us, we are still within the liturgical season of Epiphany when we remember the Magi visiting the Christ child. In some ways, their appearance illustrates the darker side of Christmas, as they unwittingly inform King Herod about the coming of, new, of a new king, which he does not understand and leads to the slaughter of the innocents. However, for the Magi, finding the Christ child in the stable was the goal they had been seeking. It was the end of a long and arduous journey they had undertaken by putting their faith in following a star, but not knowing how they would manage the journey or where it would end. Perhaps we can see a comparison to this journey in our lives now. We have been journeying through a pandemic and are still travelling, but we have the knowledge that God is always with us and his love for us remains unchanged. We can be assured that he will lead us through this crisis as he led the Magi to find the Christ child at the end of their journey. I hope you enjoyed joining in the hymn that we heard at the beginning of this morning thought, Brightest and Best of the Sons of the Morning, written by Bishop Reginald Heber in 1811. This is one of my favourite hymns, telling us about the wise men and the gifts that they bring to the Christ child. However, the words of the fourth verse remind us that it is our adoration and prayers that please God, not riches or power. It says, Vainly we offer each ample oblation, vainly with gifts would his favour secure. Richer by far is the heart's adoration, dearer to God are the prayers of the poor. God's help through the prayer, power of prayer is always available to us. We can pray while walking, driving, working, or at any time and in any place. Prayer is not a ritual that depends on us closing our eyes and kneeling and does not have to be complicated. God delights in any simple words we offer him and in return gives us so many blessings each day, some so small that we may well overlook them. So this week is dedicated as the week of prayer for Christian unity. I would like to consider how we can use the power of prayer to help and sustain us at all times, but especially at the moment. Prayer is how we actively practice believing and it should never be the last resort of God's people. It should always be our first point of action. We may well feel that as our churches are closed for communal worship, we are praying alone. But this is certainly not the case. The ancient rhythm of prayer, found in many religious orders and their traditions, teach us that when we pray, we pray not just on our own, or with those who share the same physical space, but with the whole church, the body of Christ of Christians in other places and in different times. We are now on day four of the week of prayer for Christian unity. On Monday, in Morning Thought, Ruth Crosland explained that this year, the Sisters of the Community of Grandchamp in Switzerland have prepared the material for this week to share with us. In the introduction to this, Bob Fife, who is the General Secretary of the Churches Together in Britain and Ireland, sends us this message. This rhythm of prayer, with its traditional forms of structure, hymns and psalms, and perhaps more importantly, silence, might well be an important gift from the ancient church to the church of today, struggling with pandemics and lockdowns, and more widely with some of the serious challenges that our world faces, most particularly climate change, racism and poverty. This tradition of prayer and spirituality, despite the things that hurt and separate us, invites us into shared prayer and silence together. Surely a most precious gift 
in troubled times. The meditation for day four of the week of prayer for Christian unity from the sisters of the community of Grand Champ is based on a verse from St John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And the meditation for today reads, God thirsts for relationships with us. He searches for us as he searched for Adam, calling to him in the garden, where are you? In Christ, God came to meet us. Jesus lived in prayer, intimately united to his Father, while creating friendships with his disciples and all those he met. He introduced them to that which was most precious to him, the relationship of love with his Father, who is our Father. Jesus and the disciples sang psalms together, rooted in the richness of their Jewish tradition. At other times, Jesus retired to pray alone. Prayer can be solitary or shared with others. It can express wonder, complaint, intercession, thanksgiving or simply silence. Sometimes the desire to pray is there but one has the feeling of not being able to do so. Turning to Jesus and saying to him, teach me, can pave the way. Our desire itself is already prayer. Getting together in a group offers us support. Through words, hymns and silence, communion is created. If we pray with Christians of other traditions, we may be surprised to feel united by a bond of friendship that comes from the one who is beyond all division. The forms may vary, but it is the same spirit that brings us together. In the regularity of our communion prayer, the love of Jesus springs up within us. We know not how. Common prayer does not exempt us from personal prayer. One sustains the other. Let us take a time each day to renew our personal intimacy with Jesus Christ. Perhaps this time of lockdown, when we need to stay apart and are unable to join together in worship in the Avon Valley, gives us that time to think more about prayer and use the silence that we can more readily find. So let us pray. Father God, the star that led the Magi to the stable announced to the world that its Saviour was born. Today we live in a world that is still covered by darkness and still needing to make that journey to the stable door. May our lives reflect your light day by day as we seek to serve you where you have placed us, that we might be the means through which others can encounter Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. And to conclude our time together, I have chosen another of my favourite hymns, which also happens to be an epiphany hymn. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I hope you enjoy joining and singing it and have a happy and peaceful day. Goodbye. Thank you.